Terry, as you and Pat have already said, more and more experts are warning that the year 2000 could bring a date with disaster. First, a brief explanation. This crisis is often called Y2K. What does that mean? Well, Y is short for year, two of course means two, and K is the scientific symbol for thousands. So Y2K is simply short for year 2000. But what is the basis of the problem? And why are experts so worried? CBN News reporter Chris Mitchell explains. It's been called the world's most important extermination job, eliminating the year 2000 computer bug. It's just an extremely, extremely serious and extremely dangerous situation. The dangerous situation is a simple problem, but it's nearly everywhere. When the computing era began, computer memory was very, very expensive. So to save money, computer programmers used only two digits to identify a year, like 97, 98, and so on. But the problem is that when the year 1999 turns to 2000, many computers and computer chips around the world will think it's 1900, not 2000. Because of this, many computers will behave unpredictably, malfunction, or simply crash. It uh, affects uh, virtually every facet of modern life. So wherever you look, whether you know, we're talking in terms of banking or transportation, uh, communications, uh, trade, um, just all kinds of dimensions, you can uh, point to uh, year 2000 consequences because underlying all of these various facets of uh, modern life are computers and software. The situation began over 40 years ago when we built our economy and our way of life on the computer and the computer chip. It brought us the information revolution. Today, an information revolution is changing dramatically the face of business and the fabric of society in the United States. Corey Hamasaki, a computer software engineer for nearly 30 years, has witnessed most of this information revolution. He's an expert on large mainframe computers, the ones that still run much of our civilization. My assessment is that the work is not being done. And the consequence of that is that the systems will fail and the essentials won't be available sometime after the year 2000. That's uh, deliveries of fuel, electricity, transportation, communication systems. I feel that all of those things are at risk. Added to the software problem is the risk of embedded computer chips. There's an estimated 25 to 40 billion of these in the world running everything from super tankers to traffic lights. And they're used in machines throughout factories, the phone system, utilities like power, water, and gas. They're virtually everywhere. Some estimate 1 to 10% of these embedded chips will fail. And that could cause those factories, phone systems, and so on to fail. What compounds the impact of the year 2000 computer problem is the interdependency of our economy. One part affects the other. It's a completely connected system, a system of systems. And if one part of it fails, none of it works. For example, we all depend on electricity from power plants. The power plants depend on the railroads. The railroads depend on telecommunications. Telecommunications depend on power plants. They all depend on computers. If one or more parts fail, they're like technological dominoes rippling throughout the economy. In the year 2000, every sector could suffer simultaneously. Last year's UPS strike is only a very minor example of what could happen. The impact of the 15-day strike by UPS cascaded throughout the country and affected thousands of businesses. It's going to have a, a, a terrible effect on our business. The auto industry is another example of interdependency and the year 2000 problem. The big three car makers are working hard to fix their computers and computer chips, but they depend on many suppliers. GM alone has 100,000 suppliers worldwide. If one supplier fails to be ready for the year 2000, it could shut down the entire assembly line. Stephen Davis sees the interdependency of local governments. He's working on the year 2000 problem for Montgomery County in Maryland. 
Everything's interdependent. Um, we all rely on suppliers who rely on suppliers. Many of them are using just-in-time inventory, which, of course, has a, a, a risk to it. But um, everybody depends on power. Everybody depends on public transportation to get people to and from work. Uh, at the county government level and city government, it's where the rubber hits the road in terms of government services. People rely on us for health care in some instances, uh, public safety, you know, police and fire protection. Uh, they depend on us to have the traffic lights uh, turn off and on at the right time. So there's a lot that we're responsible for, and uh, that's why we're looking at it so closely. From town hall to the assembly line, this complex but fragile supply chain brings us nearly everything we depend on. Like the supply chain that leads from oil rigs to your local gas pump, this chain runs on computers and computer chips that need to be fixed by the year 2000. Many describe the situation like this. We've spent 30 to 40 years building this computerized system. Now we have only 18 months left to fix it. The scope and complexity of the year 2000 problem concerns many. What we've noticed is the longer someone works on the year 2000 problem and the more involved and the more research they do, the more concerned they become. Bruce Webster chairs the Washington, D.C. year 2000 group. The group includes people from the government, military, business, and other sectors of society trying to fix the problem. Webster recently published a survey of what this group expects the impact of the year 2000 problem to be on the United States. The uh, results are that 85% of those responding feel that at a minimum we're going to have a 20% adjustment in the Dow and uh, some bankruptcies due to this. That's a fairly significant uh, impact and actually exceeds a lot of what other people outside the Y2K arena have felt. The survey also reported 56% believe the year 2000 problem will at the least result in a mild recession and some runs on banks. 34% believe it will at least result in a strong recession, local social disruptions, and many business bankruptcies. And 10% believe the United States will suffer another depression or worse. Few expect the world to stop on January 1, 2000, but the many disruptions to the economy could affect us all, like thousands of Lilliputians tying down this gulliver of an economy. Then why not just fix the computers? Despite the billions of dollars already being spent by government and business, there's simply not enough manpower and time to fix the problem. That's why many believe the human element, not technology, may be the most important part of the solution to the year 2000 problem. In the end, it's not the technology, it's the human factors. It's how people choose to act and react. It's the leadership we have, and it is the how people will behave in the event there are interruptions in power, in supplies, in everyday life. What will they choose to do? That is, that is what is most important and what people need to focus on. With less than 600 days before the year 2000, the question remains, how will Americans and the world respond? Chris Mitchell, CBN News. Pat, the situation is so severe that one top business leader recently warned that, quote, in my own view, it is a particularly large global disaster in the making. I am convinced the problem is vastly underappreciated. That was Jerry Jasinowski of the National Association of Manufacturers.